right. Stomach's gurgly. Do you hear that? It's my stomach. Oh, I'm like, what am I No, I what drink that caffeinated, that, that club soda, and it's like, burr, 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 burr. If you listen real close, Jeff gave me a caffeinated beverage that I'm hoping isn't poisoned. I gave it to you? <laughs> you came in and took it. Yeah, I thought that's our communal fridge. It is, but you just said I gave it to you. I was trying to portray you as a nice person. Mm. Good luck. Said if I was going to do TV, because I was never not going to be myself. Where are the people who are a little bit different? You're sitting next to one on the couch. So let's just say that. Be yourself, but not too much of yourself. Now, here's Jason. Tuesday. Hi, everybody. Thank you. Have a seat. Have a seat. Welcome to the Jason Show. Let's start with this. We lost an Emmy again. Aww. That's right. The regional Emmy Awards were on Saturday, and for the eighth year in a row, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, we lost. Aww. One year we lost to Pirates of Penzance by kids. Uh, from a children's theater. The audience, I'm serious. I'm not joking. <laughs> Another year, we lost to a senior rock band. Uh, yeah, yeah. One year, we lost to an opera. This year, we lost, and now we're in that town, so I can't make fun of them. We lost to the Sioux City Orchestra. That's it. Now, good for them. Good for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Can I help you, Engineer Brad? Come, what, what's this? I'm doing the monologue, buddy. Yeah, what, uh, where do you want this? Where do I want what? What is this? Oh, the Emmy shelf. Uh, yeah, I, 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 yeah. I, uh, go ahead. Put that in Stephanie Hansen's office. Oh, <laughs> Stephanie Hansen's office. There we go, yeah. Engineer Brad, everybody. Yeah. Give it up for him. No. All kidding aside, all kidding aside, uh, congratulations to Michelle. Uh, she is a producer here. She did a promo for The Jason Show that won a, a, an Emmy. So congratulations to Michelle. And con I wasn't kidding. Congratulations to our very own Stephanie Hansen. She entered for her very first Emmy and won her very first Emmy. Yeah. I took her out for chicken wings last night, and I poisoned three of them. <laughs> Let's get started, everybody. Here we go. I'm just trying to get in a good mood. Anyway, audience, filling in for Kendall. Give it up for Fallon, everybody. How you doing? I'm good. You're doing well? I'm doing well. Did yes. you win an Emmy over the weekend? No, never even been nominated. Never been so, nominated, you know, yeah. That's, you know, you're pretty classy for being nominated. I, I mean, look, I'm, I'm happy to be nominated. These are, it's just so funny. I don't, there isn't a good category for us. Oh. You know, we go up against the orchestra. I mean, that's why. I mean, we shouldn't even be, that those are classy people. This show should not be, uh, I don't know. What would be a dream category for your Just show? Just like a talk show oh, category. Okay, they don't fair. have that. Yeah. So, oh, I fair. Don't know. Okay. Anyway. No. Hey, I want to say thank you. I'm still recovering. Uh, my body is still recovering. My soul is still recovering. <laughs> Last week, I did a, a big charity event for my radio station called Project Down and Dirty. Every year, and there's here we are uh, now. Yeah, now this year, this year, um, this year we we did a pickleball tournament for charity. Those are that's my girl, that's my co-host Alexis. Our team's name were the Ball Slappers, and uh, yeah, <laughs> insert your uh, insert your own name there or insert your own joke there. But I'm not kidding. Uh, two things. First, uh, we raised. We were number one in fundraising because you know we compete with the other shows. We were number one. We raised thirty-three thousand dollars for oh Big God. Brothers, for wow. Big Brothers Big Sisters. Yeah. 
And I really quick, and I, I'm I, I, I'm making a joke, but I'm serious. Um, this is for all of like uh, all the puffy kids out there, uh, like I was when I was a kid. All those kids that get picked last for gym. I'm not joking when I say this. I have never won a sports anything. Like I, I was picked last in PE. I hated PE. I was the dodge and dodgeball. I've never thought of doing anything athletic. For the first time in my 49 years on Earth, we won a game. We won a game. So I was yeah. So. It was a good moment. And you won the most important part, the fundraising the, portion, which was the most important. That's all I care about. Absolutely. I hear over the weekend uh, you were finalizing your divorce. That is true. Yeah, yes. okay. Uh, I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> no, like Friday. Yeah, I'm, tell the film. I'm this is scrolling ridiculous. through Instagram. My husband never posts. Maybe some people relate to that. Like he, I, he does a birthday post once a year for our kids and for me, and that is it. Never. And I'm like, Jake posted on Instagram stories? Yeah. And it was this post, which is a photo of me, and it reads, been a hectic season of life lately, excited for a long overdue date night with this hottie tonight. And I go, a, a hectic season of life. <laughs> <laughs> We've been really busy, but I was like, Jake, people are gonna think we're having marital problems. Yes! Take, I was Jake, like, what are you doing? And he goes, he goes, really? I was trying to be nice. And I was like, don't. Don't. Don't try to be nice. I was like, delete it. He goes, are you serious? I go, yes. I'm texting my friend Jenny and she's like, yeah, I thought it was really weird and maybe something was wrong and was going to yes! text you. I said, no, I think he was trying to be nice but doesn't know how to do social media. No. I was like, anytime you see someone post like, oh, it's been hard, but I love you, you know something's going yes! on in their marriage. So I was like, del so he deleted it. You need to get a little spray bottle for him <laughs> when he starts to do social media. Like, Train him. <laughs> get off the phone, Jay. I, I need to. <laughs> Let's Ooh. get started. And for the record, their marriage is perfect. That's right, yeah. 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 Well, I mean, yeah, as perfect know. as it's any good. marriage, yeah, yeah. yeah. For sure. Let's get started. It's time for the hot dish. Roll it, Leo. Here we go. <laughs> hey, you know, I, I hate doing this. Our show is meant to make you happy, but we, we got to do this uh, because it's important. We start with some sad news out of Hollywood. Um, actress Suzanne Summers uh, passed away yesterday after a really, really long battle with uh, breast cancer. She would have turned, and listen to this, she, today's her birthday. Uh, she would have turned 77 today. Suzanne got her big break in the late 70s thanks to this legendary sitcom. Come and dance on our floor. Come and dance on our floor. Take a step that is new. So, any of you uh, from our generation, you know, uh, she played Chrissy Snow on Three's Company, which became an instant, and I mean an instant hit in 1977 on ABC. So, uh, ahead of the fifth season, though, Suzanne demanded to be paid the same as co-star John Ritter, but ABC refused. I'll talk more about that in just a second. She was then only given 60 seconds an episode before ABC fired her. Oh. Now, and I'll go off on that in a second, but let me talk to the youngins out there. All of you maybe in your mid-30s may remember uh, Suzanne from a different show. That's me. I'm talking mm -hmm. ABC's yeah. TGIF lineup. Yeah. Thanks to Step by Step with my buddy Patrick Duffy from Dallas. It was a modern day Brady Bunch with uh, Suzanne and Patrick as single parents who get married in combined families. That show also ran on ABC for seven seasons. And of course, we can't talk about Suzanne Summers without remembering her infomercials for a certain piece of exercise equipment. Look. I used to do aerobics till I dropped, then I found Thighmaster. Every single time you squeeze Thighmaster, you strengthen and tone right where you need it. So it's easy to squeeze, squeeze your way to shapely hips and thighs. That's right. We have... We have one in the Jason Show office, I'm telling you. In the, so in the early 90s, Suzanne endorsed and sold the Thigh Master. And get this, uh, in an interview with our very own Dax Holt, Suzanne revealed that she earned, are you ready? Nearly $300 million from that device. Wow. Yeah. Here's... 
We have a little flashback, but what I want to say I think is important, and I hope journalists that cover her today will remember this. Suzanne was way ahead of her time, a cliche statement, but nonetheless uh, accurate. You heard me say that Suzanne demanded to be paid the same as John Ritter. She should have been paid the same as John Ritter. Back then, it, the, the executives at ABC were aghast that she would even have uh, the, the, the kahunas to ask for a salary to rival, rival John Ritter. Meanwhile, she was on more magazine covers and she was arguably a bigger star than John Ritter and Joyce DeWitt combined. She was on the cover of Newsweek. She was on the cover of Time Magazine. And her husband, the, the Alan was also her manager, walked into ABC and said, I think Suzanne should get parody with John. They fired her instantly. And as you heard, they relegated her to a secondary set with a table and a phone. And it was so shameful how that network and that show treated her. And now, I mean, hello, Suzanne was right. Suzanne should have been paid the same as John Ritter. Uh, so to all the women in television that have parity with their male co-stars or women that are, are, are fighting for, for equal pay in this industry, you all owe a lot to Suzanne Summer. You really do. And she didn't get the credit she deserved. So... One of the times I interviewed Suzanne was nearly 12 years ago when I was a co-host on a show here at our uh, at, uh, Fox 9 here in Minneapolis called The Buzz. She talked about her love of Minneapolis and her original career goal. I have not seen this yet. Look at this. Do you know that I'm in Minneapolis every month? I spend a lot of time in Minneapolis and I go to um, your jazz clubs there. What people don't know outside of Minneapolis mm. about Minneapolis is you have great food. Yes, we do. Yes. Food, and you have great music. I love going to the Dakota. Dakota there are jazz a couple club. of clubs mm -hmm. I go to. I love. Well, anyway. You have to stop. The next, time you. You, the next time you're here, you have to stop by the set. We'll, right. we'll, we'll all cook. No, you'll okay. cook. All right. I, I, <laughs> we'll I actually um, was not going to be who I am. I was going to be a chef. That's what was always as a little girl my aspirations. Wow. I. They let me on TV, and I was like 11. Look at me on that clip, anyway. I was gonna say you're hotter now. I uh, oh, thank you. Yeah. I appreciate. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, it was, anyway, uh, I always laughed. I just made the reference a couple uh, weeks ago. When you interviewed Suzanne, you really didn't interview Suzanne. It was more like you said hello to her and she went off on a okay, monologue yeah. because she knew what she was doing. She knew how to sell her stuff. So we have a lot more to come. Go get some more coffee and we'll be back after this. Back in a moment, everyone. Live returned this weekend, and the first sketch was all about the NFL's new obsession with Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey's alleged romance. Uh, that, my friends, is our late night rewind. What should we look for in this matchup? Okay, guys, there's a lot going on here. Let's take a look. Notice Taylor's eyes. <laughs> look at the thumbs up, folks. It's a love story, baby. Just say yeah. Thank you, Kenny. You have been the opposite of helpful. Man, I cannot believe our sideline reporter is the world's biggest Taylor Swift fan. Well, no, hold, hold on now. I was online for the past 48 hours getting these Eras movie tickets. It's got to be me. Jimmy, come on. Everybody knows I'm the biggest Swifty here. Oh, please. You? You're not even on Swift Talk. Oh, have you even seen Taylor Live? Who, me? Oh, I don't know. Have I? Have I? <laughs> Met Live? Night one and night three. <laughs> well, Kelsey, Kelsey actually ended up showing up at the end of that sketch. And T also made an appearance on the show, introducing the second performance from Ice Spice. The two then were spotted uh, going to dinner hand in hand. Oh. Went to the SNL after party. That's right. I like it. Do you like it? I, I, as they say, I ship it. Oh, yep. What? Ship. I ship it. That's even what. <laughs> are you speaking? Are you speaking, young people? Yes. Okay. Yeah. What does that mean? So it's like I approve that relationship. I ship it. 
<laughs> Can't you say I approve? Nope. Okay, I ship it. Okay. I am clinging. I ship it. I am clinging to my youth, Jason. Okay. Oh I yeah. Need this. Me too. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So now you say I ship it. Okay, like your skirt, because I love your skirt. I ship your skirt. No, because it's not okay. a relationship. Let's okay, okay. I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'll practice. I'll try to use it in a sentence later. Okay, there we perfect. Go. Yeah. Perfect. After months, uh, after a months long delay because of a serious health scare, uh, Madonna kicked off her celebration tour this weekend in London. Joining me live from Hollywood with that and more is our good friend Brad from TMZ. Hi, Brad. Hey, good morning, everybody. Hey, Jason. Brad, are you a Swifty? I'm not a Swifty. I appreciate the talent and I appreciate the fans, but just uh, personally, I'm not a Swifty. Okay, yeah, I, I hear you. Anyway, okay, so Madonna, let's start with Madge. Uh, packed the house on London on Saturday. How did the first night go? Well, it went, uh, it went okay, Jason. I mean, look, she performed her biggest hits, uh, including Like a Prayer uh, uh, and, and everything like that, and Like a Virgin. Sorry, I'm losing you a little bit here. But, uh, but there was a technical uh, glitch about four songs in uh, when her audio went out. And she had to, for a few minutes, just kind of entertain the crowd and say, look, this is the last thing I wanted to happen on my opening night, uh, but here we are uh, without audio. Uh, they were able to hear her voice, but there was no backing music or anything like that. So eventually, they got it sorted out. She put on an awesome show there to 20,000 people in London at the O2 Arena. Uh, and this tour is supposed to continue to chug on through Europe and then come back to the US. Like you had mentioned there, remember, it was actually supposed to start here in the U.S. months ago, uh, but it was delayed when she was found uh, unconscious in her home. So it's really good to see that not only is she okay, uh, but this tour is still happening. Yeah, I read the story. I was shocked when she, I guess the word admitted, but she revealed that she didn't think she was going to make it, Brad. That's how serious it was. It, it was really serious. And remember, she had a fever for about a month or so, Jason, and issues in her head that she didn't get checked out because she was so afraid and thought, hey, I can't let this tour follow through. Uh, so it's really good to see that she was able to take care of her health uh, and that she's still here with us. Next, yeah, absolutely. I can't wait to see it. Well, next, a really nutter butter story involving Halle Berry. So here's the deal. One director is saying, claims, that Halle was tricked into doing one of the X-Men movies. Can you explain this? Yeah, so that's exactly what it is, because what this director is saying, his name is Matthew Vaughn, uh, he was on uh, one of the X-Men movies, I believe it was The Last Stand, uh, that he was said that he was working on, and he went into an office and he saw a script, and this is after some of the bigger names had signed on already, including Hugh Jackman, but Halle Berry had not yet signed on. And he was going through this script and he noticed a scene in there where Halle Berry's character, uh, Storm, uh, provided help or assistance to kids in Africa. And he said, hey, what is this scene? I don't remember this scene. And he claims whoever he was speaking to said, oh, it's a scene Halle wanted in the movie to get her to sign on. But as soon as she signs on, we're going to pull the scene. So he is saying that she was she was essentially duped into, okay, yeah, we'll do this scene for you if you sign on. And then as soon as she signed on the dotted line, they would pull the scene. Now, we should note that scene was never in the movie. So it looks like if what he's saying is true, it was actually pulled. That's just crappy. That's just dirty. Yeah. Not we good. haven't heard from her yet, but interesting to hear if, uh, if she'll, she'll kind of echo this. Absolutely. Have a good week, Brad. Thank you. Thanks, Jason. More of these stories at TMZ.com. I interviewed her once for that movie, actually, uh, in New York. That's where the junket was. And I made such a fool of myself, per usual, um, because I had never seen her face to face. And trust me when I say this, she is inhumanly beautiful, of like, in, in, yeah. like inhumanly. And I said, <laughs> I think I scared her because we sat down and they were adjusting the mic. And I go, I go, hi. I go, please know that I'm not hitting on you. I'm gay. And she was, oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, oh, okay. Uh, I know. Yeah. Okay. She, I go, but you're like really like inhumanly beautiful. And I watched you on Knott's Landing. Nothing from her, like nothing. <laughs> she looked at me like I had just landed from Uranus. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, she was on Knott's Landing, though. Anyway, next in the dish, last night was the season finale of the new Real Housewives of New York City. And during the finale, we got, okay, it's not really a taste. We got the lamest of little previews for what we are excited about, the upcoming Ultimate Girls Trip, featuring members of the original cast of Real Housewives of New York. Watch.
Turtle time. Does anyone want a jelly bean? I live for the walk of shame. Be cool. Don't be all, like, uncool. I do have issues with Are your issues. Up? I made it nice! Okay. Right, audience, I know. You don't have to clap. Save it, save it. I know. Um, those were all, if you don't watch, the 15-second teaser featured some iconic lines from Ramona, Kelly Kalor and Ben Simone, uh, Sonia Morgan, Countess Luann, Kristen, and Dorinda uh, Medley. Clap! Uh, <laughs> the show is going to start streaming uh, on in December on Peacock. Oh. This is my Super Bowl. Okay. This All is right. my Super Bowl. Gotcha. This is okay. my World Series. Mm -hmm. This is my Stanley Cup. Okay. This is my World Cup. All right. This is every this is everything to me. So don't contact you when this comes out. No, I'm Do Colin is moving yes. out. Perfect. I'm like yes. I'm not yes. I'm yes. the dogs. Um, yes. I'm don't call me. Fair. Because I love Roni, like the original. It's what I watched. I fell asleep to it last night, season Aww, four. Yeah. Um, I love and I love all of those women. This is going to be fantastic reality television. I almost like I should watch it even though I never watched it originally. You should. Yeah. Because right. you'll be able to pick up on all of these women. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'll give you the cliff notes. Okay. Next up, <laughs> Kelly Clarkson kicks off the new season of her daytime show today. You know, it's been delayed because of the strike. Over the summer, she moved the show to New York City uh, in the iconic 30 Rockefeller Center NBC studios. Kelly was on The Tonight Show just down the hall on Friday night and talked about something she did on her first week at 30 Rock in an elevator. Listen to this. I proceeded to not only drop my drink in the entire, like, I mean, a full venti, and then it looked like art. It looked like it went, it went oh like all over. Oh my gosh! And then I knew there were cameras, so I was like, I was like, oh my god, this, this is gonna be fe my first time here. Anyway, I completely trashed an elevator. That was my first. Really on my did. Way Look in. at this! Oh my gosh! Yeah, really no, did. and you. Even, I've never seen that. You're not even getting the full spectrum. Like, did it you went throw to it? Did you slam it down? No, I was standing there and it just slipped out of my hands and I was like, what the? And and it went it went everywhere. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah. You know, we all have a first day of work story. Absolutely. I I don't buy. I don't. I try not to unless it's like a little joke. But I I don't like to comment as a guy on women's bodies. Mm -hmm. But everybody is talking about Kelly because she looks fantastic. Yeah. Um, just amazing over the summer. It was yeah. like looks like she yeah she lost some weight it looks like but I mean she's done that before right like on yep. the voice she lost weight and the thing about Kelly is no one even cares no nope. because nope. you just love right. Kelly because yes. she's amazing yeah but yeah you know notice that she is yeah. yeah I love it they're like yeah. she got divorced I'm like it has nothing to do with the divorce she just <laughs> no. you know it has nothing to do with divorce no. Kelly's just amazing Absolutely. and the show looks great the new set I'm set I have set envy it's a good looking set you can <laughs> check your local <laughs> listings for uh, the Kelly Clarkson show we're gonna take a break. We'll be back after this. Back in a moment, everybody. Tricks and treats are coming up in just a little bit. First, easy Halloween treats that you can actually make. I promise. Then, come on, Minnie. This is it. Let's get them going. We are celebrating the 100th anniversary of the Walt Disney Company. And it's Monday, and you know what that means. We're hearing the good, the bad, and the ugly about our show when we open up the mailbag. That and more when The Jason Show continues. Welcome back. Welcome back to the show, everybody. Well, there we go. We met our first guest several weeks ago when she uh, shared her story about battling cancer on our special breast cancer awareness show. But it turns out, and I mentioned this at the end, Oh, hello. Uh, the camera keeps moving. There we go. It's like soccer. But it also, it turns out that she also creates some incredible sweet treats. Here to show us how to make easy, we promise, and delicious Halloween treats is Robin Martin from EvilCakeGenius.com. Welcome back. Hi, thank you for having me. Oh, my God. Give me a hug. I forgot. Uh, well, I didn't forget, but I... We were running out of time in your segment, and I said, I don't want to get into it and do it shorthand. I want to actually have you back to yeah. do the actual segment. So, hi. Hi. Well, have you gotten a response? What was the response like? Is it, was this your first time on TV when you were on the breast cancer special? Uh, it was the first time on local air, yes. Okay, okay. Yes, and so it was It was good. It made me realize I need to go to the tanning booth. <laughs> um, Welcome to my world, Robin. <laughs> 
never rewatched the show, but no, did you? I hope you got a good reaction from I did. it, and I hope I did. you treated you nice. I did. I got I got really great reaction from people who were really good about you know grateful that I came and told my story. Good. So. That's all we wanted to do with yeah. that show. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. It was fun. It was a good one. You can find it, it online, one. everybody. Go to YouTube. So, okay. So can I ask you, how did, where did this world come from? This is. I, I had a I had a bakery named uh, Gateau, and okay. we did some very fabulous events and wedding cakes, etc. Um, we even did Betty White's 90th birthday cake. Oh wow, bury the lead, really? Yes. Oh, okay. sure did. Nice. Sure did. Uh, but then I got diagnosed with breast cancer. I had to pull back yeah. because that was a very long yes. week type of long work week. Yeah. I decided to start selling the things that I had invented to other decorators. Got it. And it started with professionals, but then after COVID, I was like, let's do this so people have things to do at home. Yeah. So they can do it. F and so we've invented all these great things, like these little icing sheets are so easy. You frost the cake, you stick it on, you look like a genius. Yeah, look at these and here. I'm going to. These are our bat up. bars. Look, those are the bat bars, everybody. And the bat bars are made with our, they're pumpkin walnut, and they're made with my special evil cake genius cake mix, which is one mix, and we have 13 different recipes. You can make red velvet out of it, you can make pumpkin walnut, you can make pink lemonade, anything you want out of one mix. I've got them all on the site. Oh, wow. So okay. I'm no a, wonder it's evil cake I'm genius. Turn, yeah, yeah. I'm going to turn you into a genius. Okay, because, and I actually, I'm going to need your help because cakes are one thing that I'm trying to master. And. <laughs> I'm seconds from mentioning my coconut cake, but I won't because Aaron's over there and it'll cause a fight. Anyway, okay, let's start with, I hear you're putting me to work. What do I you am. do with molded Oreos? I am. Okay, so these, these little babies look like they took forever. Here, yeah, let me give a Isn't shot here. There we go, Eric, let's get One a bite. shot. One bite? I'll eat it in a, I want to get, look how beautiful those are. Okay. Oh, look at that. Okay. Now I'm making one of these. You're making one of these. Okay. You ready? Okay. Can I just bite one of these though you while you're sure talking? You sure can. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. See? Oh, that's pretty good. Okay. No culinary degree required. Okay. okay, so what these are, these are edible little discs. Same thing that is on the red velvet um, Rice Krispie treats. Okay. And you just peel them off, stick one in the bottom face down. Um, you're going to do two. Throw two in there. Okay. Move it. Boom. Let's go. And these are edible? <laughs> these are edible? Those are edible. Those are completely okay. edible. So put one there, put one there, and I'm going to grab my paste. I'm going to do a spider and a skeleton. Okay. Okay. And there, where do you want the other one? It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You okay. You Boom right there. there. There we That's go. Good. You, okay. It's lovely. And then what you're going to do is you're going to throw a little bit of. Now this is melting chocolate, so you don't have to temper it. See, okay. genius, genius. Because tempering chocolate is a pain, and if you're not you, it's not a lot of fun to do. So yes. you sell this too? Yes. So all you do is you microwave it. We microwaved it in someone's office today. <laughs> Down the hall. That must be Stephanie Hansen's Emmy office. <laughs> We had to clear all the awards Everybody off of the microwave. But us wins an Emmy. Yes, right. yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so then you're gonna just squeeze a little bit on top of that. Okay. Okay. Oh my God, I love this. Because I'm not joking. I want to have you back. In. It's. I think it's. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You just gotta get messy. Okay. Hit the it. hole isn't open. Okay. So there we go. <laughs> Audience. There we go. Grown. There we go. Is that okay, enough? Okay. Enough. Perfect. Do this one. Do this one. Okay. Okay. And again, this is tempered chocolate that you sell. You microwave it. Yep. This is so it's easy. It's wonderful. 15 oh God, seconds each. Now grab this, tap it down. Tap, okay, can I give you that? Tap this down. Yep, hit it, hit it, hit it. Good, good, good. Perfect. Cookie. Cookie. Well, I'm not doing it, you're okay, doing no, it. Okay, no, I'm gonna do it, I'm doing it, okay. <laughs> Boom. Quit shirking. Boom. Okay, there. perfect, push them down a little bit. Push them down. Yep. Boom. Boom. Okay. And use, okay, and again, this is, you sell this whole thing. Yeah, Everything yeah. I'm doing, you sell as a kit. Everything on this table, if you go to evilcakegenius.com and you click on the banner that says, let's make spooky stuff, yeah. there is a video that shows you how to make every, I'm sorry. It's all right. A no, video no, I want that perfect. shows you yeah, how to make every single one of these treats. Oh, it's I love so that. fun. So fun. Okay. You got it. Now tap it again. Tap it again. Oh, now you got it all over it's your fine. It's fine. It's all right. Jeff makes new okay. ones. Okay. There hit we it, go. Hit it, hit, hit it, it, hit it. More, more, more. You got it. Okay. You got it. You got it. Okay. And then we're going to pretend this is the fridge. Ready? Boom. Whoop. There we go. Whoop. Flip them out. They're done. You're amazing. And they jumped. Oh, my God. They jumped to different pockets, too. I, I, it's amazing how that works. And that's it. And then, that's oh, it. then let me jump them out. Ready, yeah. Eric? Don't miss this. This is only going to happen once. Right there. Yeah. Right there. There we go. Boom. 
boom, and that's it. And you Easy. can eat the whole thing. And you can eat the whole thing. They are really good, by the way. They're too. lovely, aren't they? Okay. What okay. What are these over here? These are red velvet rice crispy treats. This is my favorite, though. This is my favorite. These what, over here. Okay. okay. Look at these little. I was gonna have Aaron. Gotcha, uh, Aaron's gonna like paint me. one of these later. You, you're per you're like you're like just going from I love you. I you have no train of thought like I do. I didn't that's take fantastic. any. I, I forgot my meds. I did too. It's fine. okay. Yeah. Uh, so these little cookies, uh, they're imprinted. They're little cookie imprinters. And so you make the cookies, you bake a shortbread. Okay. And then with these paints. You just paint? You oh. just paint right on the cookie. Kids, so. how fun for the kiddos. And I don't have kids, and mm, Me but I'm just saying, if you have those things, yeah. that's they can do that with them. Yes. There we go. Yes. Yeah. And you don't have to, like, Boil your house afterwards because there's there's glitter and sprinkles and everything all okay, over the place. We have 30 seconds. Uh, my favorite, other than my coconut cake that Aaron robbed me of a victory, um, is my red velvet cake. Um, is a red velvet cake. May I take a bite of Please one of those? Please do. What is this now? Actually, this is red velvet rice crispy treat. Okay, so what's all in this? Like, what's on the top there? Is that? That is my buttercream frosting. Made with our yummy as hell frosting. Yeah, yeah. Are you, ha are you in your happy place? It's red velvet mixed with rice crispy treats mixed with buttercream. <laughs> this is so good. Give it up for Robin, everybody. To learn more about her Halloween treats and other cake and dessert decorating supplies, head to evilcakegenius.com. And don't worry if you missed any of this. We'll be posting it on the Jason Show YouTube channel. Just check back later. You can see full episodes always on the Fox Local app. We will be right back. Back in a moment. Damn, this is good. I've never... For us Disney fans, today is a day to celebrate. Walt Disney started his entertainment dynasty 100 years ago today, oh. signing a deal, signing a deal today for animated comedy shorts. Well, last night, Disney-owned ABC celebrated uh, right before they showed it in Kanto, but right before that, now, um, before I show you this, uh, this is the trailer for a new short film called Once Upon a Studio. Before you see it, though, just know it features every major Disney animated character ever, oh. ever, in one little story. Watch the trailer here. Is that it? They all gone? Oh, boy! Come on, Minnie. This is it. Let's get the gang. Yahoo! Picture time, guys. <laughs> okay. Come on, everybody. Here we go. years of stories. Make it pink. Ooh, make it blue. 100 years of magic. Ooh. Oh, hell. And Do you think all the villains will show up? Not all. <laughs> <laughs> so, the animated... The animated film features Mickey uh, and Minnie gathering all the animated studios for a group photo. That's the plot. <laughs> well, the short film also featured, and this was making news over the weekend, It all, other than the fact that I watched it and you'll tear up and it's really, really good. The news came because it featured new dialogue from the late Robin Williams. And if you remember, he was, the Ala uh, he was Genie in Aladdin. And you may not realize, but Robin put a line in his will preventing the Walt Disney Company from ever using outtakes from recording sessions for any type of Aladdin movie. Well, Disney got permission from his estate to put a line or two of dialogue in this short film saying, the genie was too important to the Disney legacy to not include, and I would agree. Now, if you missed Once Upon a Studio, it's now available to stream. If you missed it on ABC last night, it's available to stream on Disney+. Plus. It is, you, you can be a mild Disney fan, mm -hmm. and if you have ever watched a Disney film in your life, you, it, it, because it's such a great coming together, it's a mix of old animation, mm -hmm. and some of the actual animators yeah. who worked on those characters came back. Oh, wow. Eric Goldberg, who did the genie, came out of retirement to redraw the genie. Wow. And now, look, a lot of them have passed, mm -hmm. but it's so cool to see 
the computer animated characters like Moana mm -hmm. interact with hand drawn characters yeah. like Robin Hood and Cinderella and Maleficent and it's so well done. It was yeah. fantastic. Yeah. I feel like it would be really stressful to have the job of making sure every character was included. Yes. Because think about like when they do the in memoriam on like award shows, they always forget someone. Yes. It would be very stressful to be in charge of that job. Yeah. Okay, where's Fox and the Hound? Yeah. Where's Moana? Mm -hmm. Where's yeah. Aladdin? Where's Abu? Where's exactly. the G? You know what I mean? Exactly. And I was watching as I was looking at it. It's funny that you said that because we got to about the nine minute mark. It's about 12 minutes long. And I said to Colin, I said, the Fox and the Hound isn't in it yet. Aww. And I love Fox yeah. and the Hound was the first animated picture I ever saw. Oh, it's, what a brutal first one to see. I know, right? Oh. I know, I know. <laughs> but um, in the moment I said it, there's Copper. There's oh. there's the Fox and the Hound right there. Oh. Colin goes, there they are. So <laughs> yeah. it was fantastic. Your family will love it. Go to Disney Plus and search for Once Upon a Studio. We'll be right back. The mailbag. We're opening up the mailbag when we return. So good. I need a seat. Welcome back. We're glad you're here. Well, we always love to hear your feedback on our show, on us, our hair, our wardrobe, our shoes. <laughs> it's time to open up the Jason Show mailbag. Activate it, Leo. You got me. Well, first up, another huge response to the return visit of our buddy Emily from Snake Discovery. Fallon loved that segment. Uh, she was on our show last Tuesday. Here's a little bit of it, introducing us to more snakes and lizards. That show already has more than 13,000 views on YouTube alone, which is pretty good for us within a few days. Mary Ann on YouTube says, hey, Jason, you're actually doing better. You didn't scream every time Emily brought out one of her pets. <laughs> Thank you, Marianne. Rufus says, shout out to Fallon for being so brave as to hold the lizards, even though she was clearly nervous. I was. Clearly. Yeah. yeah. I was, yeah, I was like, I don't do this daily. Hold a lizard, you know? And, and you weren't faking for the show. I mean, no. you were, were legitimately not. A fan. A fan. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. It also seems people uh, who love Emily's content are starting to slowly, slowly enjoy our show, too. It's been, it's been a long road for this. Here's just a few more comments that we were loving. First, totally here for Emily, but eh, Jason's pretty cool, too. Yeah, okay. Yeah. okay. Hey, I'll take it. Yeah. Uh, next one. Here because I saw Emily, but Jason is really growing on me. Yeah. <laughs> like a fungus. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Next, I thought I was going to skip everything, not Emily, but I actually enjoyed the whole show. Oh, my gosh. I mean, we'll take it. Uh, you know, next comment. You know I've come here for Emily, but I do love you too, Jason. You've got an Australian fan oh. here. Yeah. Look at that. Well, good day, mate. That's right. Yeah. And, this, and this one says, I love Snake Discovery. Your show is entertaining. Greetings from Germany. Oh. Wow. And finally, finally, this is our favorite. Well, Jason, I watched your show for the first time. I will say Emily's segment was the best, but I did mostly like the rest <laughs> of the show as well. High praise. Wow. I mean, yeah. You know what? We'll take it. Literally, I mean, if yeah. you mostly like it, yeah. yeah. Let, me, let me tell you, we mostly like the show most days. <laughs> Next, uh, messages from our new friends in Iowa. You know, this year we expanded to more stations. Hi, Iowa. Deb says, your show just started airing in the Cedar Rapids area, and I'm loving it. I'm now trying to plan my day so I can be home to see it. I love that. Uh, you know us retired women. We have our priorities. <laughs> hey, yeah. Deb. We love you. Spread the word. And Tracy says, thank you for coming to KCRG in Cedar Rapids. Dubuque loves you. You make this fun old lady smile. Aww. Oh, That's so nice. Hey, again, I say it all the time. It means not just to me, but Aaron and Jeff and Eric and Fallon and Kendall and everyone that works in Leo and Tom, everyone that works in the show, it means a lot to us. So uh, just keep spreading the word, and that's how the, the show grows. Next, a message on Facebook from Sarah. It has to do... <laughs> <laughs> it has to do with the friend request that she received. Come back. Look at the TV, everybody. Come back to the TV. Sarah says, I received this scam request on Facebook. As you can see, <laughs> it's someone named Wellington. Oh. Wellington Mock. 
and they're using your photo. You apparently live in Oklahoma City. Yeah, they wow. apparently live in Oklahoma City. Wellington. You need to change your name. That's I guess so I do. Classy. I thought I, I liked my name. Yeah, but. Wellington. Yeah, Wellington. Well, and now well, you have to have a British accent, the announcer. Now Wellington. Yeah. Yes. Here's Wellington. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next up, last week and at the beginning of today's show, I talked about playing pickleball for the first time for a charity event involving my radio station. I do a radio show, too. Fallon does well. Uh, Joanne says, the first time I played pickleball, I broke both my arms. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I read this after it's over. Anyway, Sheesh. Jason, I thought I would play with some of my son's friends at a pre-wedding get-together. I whiffed on a shot and came running up the net when I started following Surgery the next day, missed the <gasps> wedding. Oh my goodness. I'm not joking. I did tell everybody, I didn't want to jinx myself. I wanted to come out of that raising the most money and having all of my appendages. Yes, you know what fair, I mean? I wanted, fair, yeah, yeah, I didn't want to be injured. Finally, a question from Ann. Hi, Ann. Ann writes, Where is that little couch table from? <laughs> this? <laughs> We stole it from the sales area. That's where we, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, take, we stole this from a conference room oh, uh, yeah, wow. upstairs. Those people don't need it. They don't, they, they yeah, have I'm enough fine. stuff upstairs. Yeah, but dead. yeah, no, we, I was, we needed a table and I walked upstairs. I'm like, that's cute. And I took it. Yeah, there we go. Finders keepers. We're getting a new set next year. So this is temporary. Yeah. Oh. We better get a new set anyway. Oh, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Stay connected. <laughs> Stay connected with our show on social media. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Just for, search for Jason Show TV. And if you're new to us, you can also follow our personal account. Search for Fallon and just search for Jason Matheson. Just my name. We're going to take a break. We'll be back after this. <laughs> It is time for the world's shortest segment. Hi. Good news for solo travelers. This is great. This is great. Norwegian Cruise Line says it's going to add solo cabins to all 19 of their ships. Travelers will have the option now of three types of solo rooms at a rate lower than the typical double cabins. They will also have access to an exclusive solo lounge on some of their ships. Look for the new rooms. I love this starting in 2024. That's amazing. What took them so long? I know. That was they should have been doing this the whole time. That's right. I mean, hello, solo people travel too. That's yeah. true. Yeah. We'll be right back with a surprise goodbye. Stay with us, everybody. I love this. I know. That, I've done those. <laughs> wow. I guess we have to watch Beckham. Yeah. Oh my God. I watched a little bit of the first episode. You did? Yeah. It is time for the surprise goodbye. You know how this works. We don't know what's in the segment until I read the teleprompter right now. If you thought if you thought you loved Halloween, check out one woman in Arizona. She oh celebrates. Oh, yes. oh my goodness! <laughs> this is fantastic. She yeah. celebrates Halloween by putting a 12-foot skeleton in the back seat of her car. <laughs> Just think about seeing this driving down the highway. Uh, that's not Amazing. all. The woman also cruises around, blasting creepy music. <laughs> uh, not surprisingly, she gets a lot of stares. Yeah. <laughs> Look at. How does, she, how does she go through a drive-thru? You know what I mean? <laughs> Don't you have a cool witch in your yes. backyard? She's 12 feet tall, and she's up on a broom, and she says, honestly, I think some cursed things. And I'm, <laughs> I've been afraid to plug her in because she's speaking some dark magic. <laughs> I'm scared of her. Did you unplug her? I did. I, well, also, my four-year-old daughter is terrified of her. So <laughs> as a family, we've agreed to not plug her in. <laughs> it's so scary. It wasn't, it wasn't was she like eighteen hundred dollars or she something? Was, she was three hundred, and it was right after I told my husband we're not spending any more money. And then I ordered a three hundred dollar twelve foot witch on Home Depot's website, like an idiot. I don't know. Can you can you take a picture of the witch tomorrow? Oh, absolutely. Bring in I, the I have witch. a video. You can hear her dark magic. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's so creepy. Hey, I wanted to say happy birthday to my aunt Char. I love you, aunt Char, watching in Florida tomorrow. Tim Allen joins us to talk about his stand-up tour. That's tomorrow, but right now, that's going to do it for us. If you're watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, you go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Have a good day, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.